Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this first What Is Wednesday of 2018, I'm going to be tackling What Is Redux. Now, What Is Redux is one that's been requested a lot, and uh, I actually I wanted to delay it a little bit so that it could coincide a little bit with the release of a new series I have, which is Redux and React for Everyone. And if you want a preview of this series, it's going to be going up later this week on the YouTube channel. You're going to get access to the first five videos or the first five tutorials, that is, anyways. And uh, in this series, we're going to be learning Redux from the ground up as if you had never even heard of it or knew what it did. And we're going to be doing that with React. So in the context of React, we're going to be teaching you everything there is uh, to know about getting started with Redux. But on to the more important part of this video, which is, well, what is Redux? Because honestly, uh, if you're coming at this and you read, Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. Um, yeah, I, I mean, so that describes it very well. But like, uh, there's going to be some people out there who, who look at this predictable state container for JavaScript apps and think, well, why do I need a predictable state container? Why do I need a state container? And what is a state container? And how does this all sort of fit into modern web app development? So Redux itself evolved from the ideas presented in Flux, right? Uh, and Flux was a pattern an architecture, if you will, for uh, app, uh, for building user interfaces uh, was created by Facebook. Redux gives you a single object with every piece of application state in your entire web application. Um, what might fall into that? Well, whether or not the navigation on mobile is open, whether or not on the level of tutorial site, whether the shopping cart is open. Um, you could think of the state of the site also having to do with things like alert messages, whether an alert message has been triggered, right? That's all state. But in addition, we also have state such as this data that came in from our API, right? The API uh, got the SKU number from the URL. It went and then it grabbed all of this data and guess where it put it? It put it in Redux. It put it in this giant object full of stuff, okay? And actually, uh, Level Up Tutorials is using Redux. If you have the Redux dev tools installed here and we tab over to them, uh, you can see all of the different actions and stuff that have taken place. Now, I say actions uh, full well knowing that you may not have any idea what that means. If I check out my state here, you can see that we have a full state tree. For instance, we can see if the checkout is open or not, right? We can see that the is checkout open is set to false. We can also see all of the playlists that have been loaded, all of the products that have been loaded, whether or not there's an active product or not. And as you can see here, this is our entire application. And one of the cool things that Redux offers is, well, these dev tools right here. So in addition to be able to see the entire state of your entire application, watch this, let's go actually find the, uh, where is it, nav? Look at nav right here. When I click nav, uh, we see that toggle nav has been triggered. And although nav shows itself as false right now, that's because we're at this point in time. If I click down here, you'll see that nav is now set to true. So it provides this overall state tree, right? Your entire application state. It allows you to connect into these dev tools, but at the heart of it, there's sort of a lot more principles that sort of uh, make Redux what it is. For instance, this object here that contains the entire state of your app, it never gets modified. And you think, well, how could that be? Because I just saw you open that nav and this became true. Well, that's true. But if we go back in time by selecting any of these actions, right? Any of these things that we did, such as uh, toggling the navigation, what we're getting is the entire state of our application at that time. So what Redux does is instead of modifying the state, it actually takes the current version of the state, 
modifies what needs to be modified and returns a new copy of that. So every time your state changes, an entirely new copy of the state tree is generated. And that's cool because we can do things like this time travel and go back in time and we'll see before the user data was loaded. Or if we jump right here, we can see when Git products was loaded or we can toggle our navigation. And this makes debugging and understanding your app way, way, way better. We can have a much bigger viewpoint of our app. It's also easier to test. It uh, makes a lot more sense for organizing your app. Now, uh, on to some of the criticisms of Redux. Redux has been uh, said that it's too complex. It's difficult to learn. Um, there's a lot of jargony things. You hear words like uh, actions, reducers, store, uh, action creators. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can really get people confused. For instance, to pull off an action, you need first an action, which isn't a function at all. It's actually an object, right? And you need to dispatch that action, which in turn hits a reducer and determines how to modify your state. So it's not simply just a this dot set state like you typically get in React. And therefore, people can feel like it's a lot of extra code to do something that maybe could be a little bit more simple. Now, in the uh, Level Up tutorial series, I definitely address all of that. I talk quite a bit about um, the complexities of Redux. So if you want to learn uh, all about all that stuff, this series makes it really simple. We make things very, very simple in it. However, uh, you know, at the point is, is, is I do feel like personally, I do feel like Redux is more complex than it needs to be. I do feel like it's verbose. Uh, you have to write a lot of code to get done what you want to do. But honestly, any of the uh, sort of overly verbose code stuff well, it becomes worth it when you have a large application or even a medium-sized application that you need to have this kind of vision, structure, and control over. Um, because if you're managing everything in sort of different ways and keeping things all in component state, not that you should ever throw out component state, because I, I actually uh, strongly believe that if a component it can manage its own state, then it should. And then if other components need to manage that component state, then maybe it should go into Redux. I, I just think the benefits of using Redux are super huge on large to medium applications and outweigh the costs of extra files and, and sort of stuff like that. So those are the criticisms of Redux. Again, you can think of it as essentially a system for dealing with the entire state of your application, whether again, that's navigations open or things loading and stuff like that, okay? So again, if you would like to learn uh, how to use Redux and have your application organized in this kind of way, uh, this series goes into hitting an API, it goes into doing simple toggles, it goes into actually understanding the concepts behind the jargon in Redux. So if you're interested in that, check it out, Redux and React for Everyone, now available. Um, also, good documentation. One of the things I love about Redux, despite uh, it saying things like it's predictable state container, for, like, okay, some of this stuff gets in the way of learning it, but this documentation is second, well, maybe not to none, because there's some better docs out there, but this documentation is great. Uh, there is some really excellent examples in here. They get into practical examples and usage. And when you come in here, you truly kind of look at the code, but you can understand what's going on. It even gives you a whole bunch of recipes and best practices, FAQ, that sort of stuff. These docs are awesome. Uh, so this is a great place to go either after you've taken my course or another course on Redux or while you're taking it, and maybe just get an idea of some of the stuff. If you read the core concepts and motivations, you're going to understand quite a bit more why you would want to use Redux. Okay, so that's what what Redux is. And uh, you don't have to use it with React. That's just the particular flavor that I have this course on. So if you're using Vue or Angular or any of that stuff, no worries. Redux is good for that as well. So yeah, redux.js.org. Learn more. It's a library for working with the state of your app. And that state of your app is basically all of the data in your app as well as things are open or closed, uh, any of that sort of stuff.
okay? So check it out, redux.js.org, uh, leveluptutorials.com forward slash stores, and then just check it out. The product is Redux and React for everyone. It's also available for subscribers, so sign up to become a Level Up Pro. Also, I actually just dropped seven new free tutorials last night on leveluptuts.com. You can see them right now in the uploads or in the new tutorial section on full stack GraphQL with Apollo, Meteor, and React. So if you are looking to learn uh, those technologies together, which are really cool, I'm going to be doing another video on uh, what is GraphQL, I'll be doing it on what is Apollo, and we'll be talking quite a bit more about this stuff, which I firmly believe is the future of data loading in web applications. So uh, check out that series if you're interested. It's up. The entire thing's going to be for free. Seven videos are on now. Many more coming very super soon. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.